Hi, uh, here I'll show you how to use uh, COPS or uh, compositing nodes uh, to generate geometry dependent textures. Uh, that is, how, how can you access the geometry attributes uh, inside compositing network and use them in generating whatever texture you need. Okay, so here I already have uh, preloaded a simple rock uh, model uh, to work with. It, it's uh, already UV mapped so and I have al also scaled it down a bit just uh, it's easier to work with so the first thing we want to do is uh, split geometry along the UV seams for that we use the point split uh, node and set it to vertices and attribute to UV this is the attribute uh, along uh, which we want to split it and we also want to promote it from vertices to points so now it's we have UV in the points and next thing we want to do is to transform uh, geometry from original shape to the UV space use the point triangle for that Alright, here is our model in the UV space. Basically it looks the same as the uh, UV unwrapped uh, version. Um, it all, everything fits inside the 1 to 0 uh, space as in the UV map. So we just add a null node to name it GeoUV. Okay. Next thing is we need to create a COP network. Let's dive in. Inside the COP network, we just use the color node to create an empty texture. You can set the size first for something smaller, just it's faster to work with. Then we can use a VOP uh, COP generator node to this is a node where at which we'll do all the texture generation work. It's basically a VOP network. So, and this is where all the magic happens. So basically this uh, a VOP network gets executed for every pixel of the texture. Uh, what we get as an input are uh, X and Y coordinates of uh, the pixel in the UV space. That is uh, the coordinate space from zero to one as in our UV layout. And uh, this is the reason uh, why we flattened our input geometry into the UV space earlier, because now we have a direct relation of each texture pixel uh, to the flattened geometry through these uh, UV coordinates. And uh, now we can use a function uh, or node uh, called XYZ dist. Uh, first we need to uh, create a vector from the x and y coordinates so uh, what this node does is it returns the closest point of a 3d geometry to some arbitrary 3d point in space uh, it gives us actually more uh, it returns the ID of the primitive uh, in which the closest point is located and also it gives us the UV coordinates, actually the barycentric UV coordinates of that point inside the primitive. So let's quickly connect our uh, pixel coordinates as a position and uh, it also expects a geometry file actually what you can do here you can reference an existing SOP node so you do that by just going up selecting your node uh, clicking ctrl C copy going back and doing paste and you just need to add an OP and colon in front and that will work so why was this important because uh, we'll use another node uh, called primitive attribute 
or its vex equivalent function is uh, prim uv. So uh, this uh, node needs exactly parameters, exactly what the xyz dist gives us. It needs a primitive ID number and a uv coordinate, birth centric uv coordinate. Uh, and what this node does, it, it can return any geometry attribute at that given uh, point. Basically, it uh, interpolates the attributes across the primitive and returns the interpolated value at the coordinate. So in our case, uh, because our flattened geometry is in the same space as our texture in the UV space, now we can get the corresponding primitive ID uh, and the bare centric UV coordinate for each texture pixel we are processing. So let's quickly connect it, UV, primitive ID, and also this node uh, asks for a geometry file and we can uh, reference uh, existing SOP node. But in this case we want to reference not the to flatten geometry, but actually the real 3D geometry. So we just quickly create new null, name it geo, because this geometry and this geometry is almost the same. They share the same number of uh, primitives and their order is the same. Uh, we can use uh, this information to sample uh, the other, the 3D uh, geometry. Just copy Go back, oops, paste, add op in the beginning. So, and also uh, we will need to specify uh, what attribute we want to receive. By default it's color, but we want position. Uh, and so basically what we get is the position, 3D position of this pixel when it gets projected on this on the 3d mesh through the uv mapping so what we have now is for every pixel we know now the 3d coordinate of the point which uh, relates to that pixel uh, on the 3d model uh, we can test it just by uh, to, to float we just see how the texture looks. Just plug each the RGB values, go up. Here we can already see that the texture uh, looks like a position, baked position map. So we can just add a null. We can name it out text. We can add a qu uh, quick material node just to quickly preview the texture. It's this node is again from the side effects labs or game dev tools previously. And uh, just copy this node and set it as base color texture. Again, prefix with the OP. And voila, we have our position texture mapped on our object. Okay, and just to drive the point further, uh, what else can you do? You can also get some other attributes. Okay, this is the position, and for example, get normal. Can, for example, just do some kind of math operation. Check the geometry normal, uh, how it's uh, in which direction it's oriented, and use that for something. I don't know. Here we have uh, in the texture all uh, surfaces whose normal is pointing upwards, basically dot product. Um, this way. You have the freedom to create whatever uh, crazy texture you you want in in, in this VOP network. Basically, it's already like substance. 
Of course, uh, you're not limited to just sampling this uh, one uh, geometry. You can sample any other geometry too. Uh, let's show it this, for example, by creating a quick, uh, some kind of high polygon version of this model. Just, just quickly remesh it. Just add some kind of noise to it. Ooh. All right, whatever. Uh, so just add a null name this geo hi let's copy it so inside our cop network uh, so basically what we need to do is we already have the 3d position on the low poly geometry and so we'll use this position to do basically the same we'll we will uh, use again XYZ dist node, but this time we'll feed the position like the 3D position and we'll reference the uh, high poly geometry there. So now we are getting a primitive uh, number and UV coordinates of the, of the, on the high poly mesh. And then we can use, for example, the prim UV node and use the same primitive the primitive id and uv and also reference the geo high node and now here we have a normal attribute of the high poly uh, model and we can use it in our texture just like feed it directly for example let's see what happens okay just it works quite fast actually much faster than, than baking let's see in the composite view and already here we can see that we have uh, basically world space normal of the high poly object. Of course, there are some, seems to be some kind of art artifacts, but that's probably because, um, because the high poly object is have some kind of self intersections there, most probably. Okay, it's definitely because of the self-intersecting <laughs> intersecting geometry. Just we can fix it just by blurring the normals before the mountain node. Just first create the normals on the point and blur them. Now the noise uh, displaces much more smoothly and so there are no these weird self-intersecting parts. Just add back, calculate the normals. All right, and now let's see. Yep, seems we have fixed the problem. And oof, as the last thing we can just, for example, use that in our dot uh, operation. And now we can see that uh, this dot product is calculated from the high poly normals and projected on the low poly. Basically, uh, allows us to do uh, many complex uh, texturing operations, uh, and we have, yeah, we have full access to all the three D geometry data we need. We can even, I don't know, we ha we have some, we might have some kind of. Uh, other other adjacent objects we want to sample like for example to get the distance to the terrain under the under the rock so we can sample that uh, get the distance and then do some kind of blending operations i don't know some kind of dust build build